Hamilton and this is the MRT Evo 10 for the Hot Tuna Challenge. At the moment we've just finished our dyno tuning and final test run of the MRT Evo 10 with the 5 speed transmission. Now this is obviously our R&D vehicle that we're submitting for the challenge and one of the things that we've found that just with the dyno run that we've fiddled with is changed some spark plugs to some new race spark plugs because obviously we're pushing the car pretty hard with the power upgrade that we've got and also We've done some fine tuning of the maps using the Ecutech ECU Safeco program. The fantastic opportunity that we've got with this car is it's got really, really good grip. It's got fantastic handling. It's got incredible power, and it's going to give uh, us a fantastic opportunity to just show just how well this car performs. And you'll see some feedback from the uh, testing at the track how the car will go. So um, stay tuned for the next update in this video. We finished the dyno run on the car. The next step is to finish off all the brakes and suspension to make sure the car is ready and spot on. The car's got one of our power upgrade kits, which has obviously given us a fantastic opportunity to show what it can deliver in a controlled environment with some independent testing. And um, of course, the level of power that it's got is going to be really good fun for these guys to drive at the track. We've now fitted the DBA 5000 series rotors and the SBS uh, track road pads and of course the front strut assembly is all back in together with the MRT progressive rate uh, springs. Of course the next, thing, next step is obviously bedding the brakes in. Now the pads are old and the rotors are obviously what they call green. Now it's better to bed in brakes with new and old and old and new instead of two lots of brand new stuff as in green rotors and green pads because it's twice as hard to get them bedded in correctly. So what we'll do uh, this afternoon and tonight is do some progressive braking to heat the rotor up to uh, burnish the surface and get down what they call a transfer layer so the pad will work correctly with the rotor and then over a period of the next couple of days slowly increase the temperature as the brakes are bedded in about more and more and more and then eventually we'll just jump on them as hard as what we know we can to get the best result and then the pads will be fully bedded in for the test on Monday. Now as you can see here I just want to point out you can see the alloy hat with the factory studs pointing through obviously this whole surface area here matches up with the back of the factory wheel and that's what gets the heat out of the centre assembly um, instead of having it much transfer into the front wheel bearing assembly which is obviously another additional benefit with the DBA 5000 series rotors. So there you have it, that's the uh, brakes and the, susp and the uh, suspension upgrade. If I get my cameraman to come around the side, around here, you can see how we've, obviously it's been in there for a while, this is the heavy duty sway bar that um, Whiteline developed. Um, it's got the adjustable features at, I at the end. And that will improve the roll stiffness and obviously reduce body roll by having the stiffer sway bar and the advantage of having it adjustable means we can tune the car from a little bit of understeer a little bit of oversteer. Now one thing I'll point out with the Evo 10, the stability control electronically in the car is very very advanced and you have to be very very careful about how you tweak and adjust the suspension settings on this car because you can actually end up going backwards not forwards from an improvement. Now the back of the uh, Evo 10, this is the factory standard rotor, so you can see a very similar in design to the DBA rotor that we're going to replace it with, but of course there's no slots, and also we've got the SBS brake pads which are more akin to a racetrack application. If the car gets driven a lot on the road, we'll often change these pads to a road pad because they can squeal if you don't drive the car hard all the time on the road. We've also fitted some MRT progressive rate springs, which are not what we call super low because we don't fit super low springs. We want to make the car handle as best as possible, so it's lowered just a little bit. And of course, it's got the white line rear suspension upgrades as well. So all those things added together are going to give us an improvement in braking as well as an improvement in handling. So we've got on the underside of the Evo 10, and this is where the horsepower is all created after the ECU is upgraded from a flow characteristics and getting the exhaust out of the back of the engine. Now, at the moment for this test, the car has got what will ultimately be released as our XD package, which is modified turbo, dump pipe, high flow cap, engine pipe, center muffler assembly, and rear high flow muffler. And as you can see under the car here, 
It's a bit hard to see right up inside here, but that's where the uh, high flow dump pipe connects to the turbo, which really makes a big difference from a performance point of view. It's got a flexible joint down the bottom here, because obviously the engine's talking backwards and forwards, and you need some movement between the engine exhaust assembly and the main exhaust that hangs off the car. This particular exhaust system has got one of our high flow cat converters. This is um, a metallic substrate cat converter, but it's a real high flow cat multi cell device so you can get a lot more flow. The downside of these really, really big high flow cats, you need to be very careful of and a bit of a tip, is you can get check engine light codes with cat inefficiency errors with some of the upgrades. So depending on what you're choosing, um, ask about the details of the cat that you're putting in the car because they have a big impact on performance and also a huge impact on the check engine light code errors. With obviously our system, we guarantee that you won't get that problem. The centre assembly with big thick flanges so there's less chance of distortion and leakage from a long point of view. Now obviously this looks pretty horrible because it's been through the wars in the last months and doesn't look anywhere near like a current model exhaust system we fit on the Evo 10s. Centre resonator to reduce the drone and our really really big high flow rear muffler. So it's not ridiculously noisy but it's just enough to sound great but at the same time flow a hell of a lot of horsepower to get that target figure that we obviously eagerly want to take advantage of with the Evo 10. So there you have it. That's what we've done to our Evo 10 for the uh, hot tuna test and obviously there's a whole lot of other info that you'll find on this video and um, we'll keep you up to date with that as well.